Why are people buying old school R2R ladder decks such as this Kitsune tuned edition version of the Hollow Spring 2 rather than decks that use the latest high performing DAC chips which have distortion figures that have multiple zeros after the decimal point? Well, to answer that question, I have to go back to my high school days when I went into the uh, local hi-fi stores, and I it, back then it was all CD players, but pretty much all CD players were multi-bit or ladder deck based. So it was. I remember the first one-bit CD players coming in and listening to both of those and comparing that to the old the multi-bit versions from the same manufacturer, and noticing there was a slightly different sound. Well, the problem is while they're capable of more technical accuracy and uh, capable of reproducing high-res more accurately. A lot of people don't like the sound or haven't liked the sound of modern decks so much as they did the old multi-bit or ladder decks. Now I looked at one of those with the Marantz Project D1, which is one of the nicest sounding decks I've ever heard. However, it is limited to 48 kilohertz, if CD quality being of course 44.1. So while I, in, to some degree, I kind of wish there were no high-res files, and I do wish that everything had just stuck to that old standard, because it would make things much simpler. But of course, nothing is ever simple. Now the thing is, uh, the last ladder DAC chip designed for audio was the Burr Brown PCM1704, and it w went out of production some time ago, and the very last one sold for a lot of money. I think we were looking at close to $1,000 per chip. And now you can't get a, a genuine ladder DAC chip anymore, except... An industrial version and the industrial chips are used for things like MRI machines and military equipment where you need like a digital information about how much a motor should move it has to be perfectly translated into a motor movement and that's what Mike Moffat of Shit Audio used in the Yggdrasil and his other multi-bit DAC products used industrial chips which is pretty da pretty daring for him thing to do because they weren't designed for audio at all. For other manufacturers such as Audio GD, Hollow Spring and Denifrips they have to do the old school method, which is basically make a full size version of what was in chips like the PCM1704, which means putting a whole lot of expensive resistors on a board with switches and using that to produce a good old school ladder deck. Now, a ladder deck uses switches to switch in and out resistors of uh, half values, but the problem with doing that is that the most accurate resistors you can get are only 1% resistors. Now, the accuracy you need for 16-bit audio is 1 on 65,535. So it's off the shelf, it's just not going to work and probably not going to sound too good either. So what the manufacturers have done is they have used things called linear compensation. Now linear compensation involves uh, usually a programmed FPGA to control the ladders and also a second ladder to compensate for the errors of the first. By using that and things like doubling up resistors to uh, multiply the accuracy and uh, some other tricks, I've managed to get pretty decent accuracy, although genuinely you will not get better than 20-bit accuracy. Uh, it's kind of technically impossible anyway. Uh, as things go, they've done pretty well, and maybe how accurate they go down to 16 bits is probably somewhat debatable. But all the same, it has produced some fantastic high-end and really great sounding decks, such as this Hollow Spring Audio 2. So as we see, just like the photos on the website, the inside of the uh, Kitsune Tune Edition version of the Hollow Spring 2 is a really beautifully arranged deck. These are the, uh, the silver wire transformers and uh, other silver wires in here for the power supply. We have uh, the XMOS USB input, and this is the digital receiving area. We have uh, actually an Altera Max 5, which is a uh, FPGA used for, well, digital processing. And one of those is obviously used for digital processing in this. You have the uh, various inputs and the AKM uh, resamplers, which resample to uh, DSD or oversample to PCM as required. And you have a little transformer here for the AES, of course. And this obviously goes through down through to the digital. This is the power supply area. And the digital, this is the uh, main, the resistor ladder itself. So it's actually double-sided. There's the resistors on the bottom side of the board used for compensation. Another Altera Max used as an FPGA for programming the, uh, the boards. And you can see these are the resistors, of course, and uh, these would be the switches on the outside. And uh, I'm not sure what is particularly used for PCM and what's used for DSD, but this uh, there will be a separate part or separate part of the uh, a separate ladder or something used for DSD processing which won't use these boards at all or maybe it's part of these boards it's hard to say what the arrangement is it's a little bit more obvious on the audio GD stuff for example and it, it could for all I know be in here but then this is the analog output with some nice very fancy looking Mundorf uh, capacitors here 
and this is just a little amplification circuit with um, probably a couple of buff uh, buffers and some transistors and then uh, you have your transformers output to uh, uh, RCA or XLR as required. Now Tim from Kitsune, Kitsune Audio modifies the Holo Spring 2 to make the Kitsune Tuned Edition and that's what he sent me along with a Kitsune Tuned Edition SU1 USB bridge. The Holo Spring 2 itself has a number of interesting features. By default it's non-oversampling, however they include an AKM chip inside to produce oversampling if desired and there are three options in that available. The first is just oversampling. If it's uh, PCM data that goes in, you get PCM oversampling up to uh, the maximum available. If it is DSD, it goes up sampled to DSD maximum that's available. Otherwise, you can have everything resampled to PCM or everything resampled to DSD, or you can just, again, leave it in non-oversampling mode. And the DAC through USB will accept up to 768K input, and uh, through this Kitsune Tuned Edition SU1 USB, 384K input and both will accept DSD 512. So there are quite a number of options available if you have good quality upsampling software such as HQ Player or Audivana Plus. So with that, I tested the uh, Kitsune Tune Edition version of the Holo Spring 2 with various inputs and various uh, kinds of upsampling and software through my speaker system and through various headphone amps and headphones and stay tuned for my impressions of all of those. Of course, the reason people are buying DAC such as this Kitsune Tune Edition Hollow Spring 2 is because of the sound. Now the sound, well DACs don't have a sound, music has a sound. Well actually the sound coming out when music is played back through the Hollow Spring 2 is what I would call musical and engaging, at least in non-oversampling mode. What the heck does that mean? Well in comparison let's talk, take a, a quick look at the uh, Shit Audio's Yggdrasil Analog 2. It for me is maybe a touch on what I call the dry side. It's on this borderline which is perfectly between kind of musicality where it's kind of you feel like you're you're getting an expression of the music versus accuracy and a very accurate sound, which can be, well, a little bit kind of like detached. And if I take that in the being in the middle, and then something like uh, the old benchmark DAX being more extreme on the the accurate side, the Kitsune Tune Edition is on the other side. It's more kind of softer, but still like if you listen to instruments which are very uh, hard to reproduce and sound unnatural through a lot of uh, digital equipment, things like violins and pianos and uh, other, and maybe even guitars. The kids Kitsune Tune Edition version of this Hollow Spring 2 does make those instruments sound very real and very expressive. Of, of uh, each note sounds very expressive. And when I had all three DACs in the rack here, of course the Brazil's in the speaker rig at the moment. And what was I, what was I going to choose? A Hugo 2 or the Yggdrasil? It turned out to be the, kit, the uh, Holo Spring 2. And the Holo Spring 2 is the one I went for for a lot of listening, just because it could make me very much enjoy listening, whereas uh, the, the uh, Yggdrasil sounds really nice through my good old Studio 6 tube amp. Now, of course, the Studio 6 isn't a very tubey tubey amp. It's a, it's a very precise amp, and but it has maybe just tiny bit takes the edge off things in some ways. It was also a very nice match with the Master 9, incidentally, which is also kind of um, it's uh, maybe a, uh, a touch smoother but still extremely fast amp and it worked out very very well when I just wanted to enjoy listening and it did a fantastic job of that especially non oversampling mode where it was kind of more uh, dynamic and engaging than even the even uh, shit audio's Yggdrasil again had that uh, effect of making me want to listen now the interesting thing is if I put CD quality music through that's my that was my feeling when I started doing things like putting high res through it or oversampling or upsampling using software that's where things started to get a little bit interesting I'll get one thing out of the way first and that's DSD now DSD through the uh, the Hollow Spring 2 I totally did not like it just if whether it was real DSD files or it was uh, uh, upsampling to DSD via even HQ player which does an excellent job of it or any other software it just sounded flat no sound stage depth dynamics completely gone uh, it just didn't sound good to me at all so unless you like your music super super smooth over with all the dynamics robbed it just did not do a good job of DSD but regular PCM on the other hand such as what you get out of a CD or out of Tidal totally different story as you oversample PCM music or it was or it was high res to begin with the Kitsune Tune Edition uh, seemed to smooth out very slightly it still retained a lot of detail such as, you know, just the, I felt that it was in a similar level of detail to uh, the Yggdrasil and possibly the Hugo 2. But, of course, like the Hugo 2, it's a little bit sensitive to setup. 
Whereas the Hugo 2 can sound a little bit hard depending on the no depending on the noisiness of the USB input or the quality of the input, which is probably where the Q test comes in with its isolated USB and does a better job of that. Uh, likewise, the Kitsune Chin Edition worked best when using the modified SU1 that Tim from Kitsune Audio provides. Better still was a very high quality streamer such as this SoundAware D300 reference. If you do have a good streamer with I2S output, the Kitsune Chin Edition will be an, an excellent hookup, and that's where you actually see them both are pushed back slightly because I only have a shortish uh, I2S cable to hook them up with. And that combined with a, in no oversampling mode or with uh, high quality upsampling well, it made the uh, DAC really pleasant to listen with in my system. Incidentally, some the makers of HQ Player took some measurements of the Hollow Spring 2 and found that it seems to truncate above 20 bits. Actually, so does, of course, the uh, Igduzel Analog 2. So they recommended the interesting thing about HQ Player is you can output 20 bit, or you can actually select the number of bits to output. So I set it to output 20 bit and upsampled with an app a filter called the PolySync XTR, which is their recommended one. Now there are a lot of filters in HQ Player uh, and there you can try a lot of different stuff, but that was their recommended one to me sounded the best with all the others sounding a little bit weird. And they can the different filters have different weird effects on the how like your perception of sound stage for reasons which are too complex to go into the video. But with that setup it sounded maybe uh, varied for me depending on how I set it up between smooth and musical and maybe a little bit too smooth and musical. Actually I liked the uh, Hollow Spring 2 best in non oversampling mode with just regular CD quality material and that's where it just sounded very very pleasant to listen with, really fantastic and I, the last thing I listened to was uh, Take 5 by the Dave Brubeck Quartet and just listening to the, the cymbals through that uh, and it was just a really fantastic experience. So if you are someone who's looking for a, uh, a smoother more musical DAC and you tend to find everything a little bit too maybe dry or a little bit too precise. Something like this Kitsune Tune Edition version of the uh, Hollow Spring 2 could be the go, actually. And it's one deck I'm going to really miss when it goes because it was one that just made me really want to listen to music. So I reckon in the end, if you're looking for a very smooth and musical deck and, and high-end all the same, get the, the Kitsune Tune Edition of the Hollow Spring 2. Actually, get the whole kit from Tim. He also has interconnects as well, uh, a good quality USB cable. Get the whole kit and it will provide really great listening pleasure. If you don't need the SU1 because you have a good streamer, if you have a good streamer with I2S output, that's going to give you excellent results too. Or a good streamer which has high quality USB output should work really well with the uh, USB input on the Hollow Spring 2 as well. So that it could be a really fantastic, smooth and, and end game DAC for a lot of people. So once again, I hope the, my impressions of the Kitsune Tuned Edition version of the Hollow Spring 2 were help helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, even criticisms, let me know. Do you own one or did you buy one? Let me know in the comments below. And if you did like my video, don't forget to subscribe. And also, if you'd like to help me out making these videos, I am looking for people, supporters. My supporters have actually seen this video already in advance without ads. And they can see that only for like a couple of bucks a month. And that will help me out make these videos in the future. Do consider that as I'm also giving away some gear too, which I don't no longer need. And um, if you'd like to be in the draw for any of that, sign up to be a supporter. The link's in the description. Anyway, thanks once again for watching, and I'll see you online.